If you'll dive into your iPhone settings application, you'll find a lot of cool options there. Some of which you might know and others that you might not have heard of. And in this video, I'll show you 10 such settings that you should definitely change right now in order to get the best experience on your iPhone. So apps like Google Maps, Zomato and Mintra might require your exact location. And that's fine because they require your exact location in order to deliver the product that you have ordered to your exact location. But not all applications requires your precise location, such as I don't even know what will Instagram do with my precise location. Show me even more personalized ads? God knows. So what we as consumers can do is opt out of precise location for any particular application. And the steps to do that are fairly very simple. Now all you have to do is just go inside settings, then select the application that you want to turn off precise location for. For example, uh, I'll take Instagram in this case. Then I'll tap on location and then I'll turn off toggle for precise location. Now don't get me wrong, it'll still let Instagram know about my location if I have turned on location settings, but it won't be my precise location. For example, if you're browsing from your home, it'll still let Instagram know about your locality and maybe neighborhood, but won't let Instagram know about your exact and house's address. That's one nice feature to have. Now next up, let's talk about application. You see, a lot of people have a lot of applications installed on their device. Now, along with filling up your iPhone storage, it can also give you a very cluttery look on your home screen. Let's fix these two issues. So the very first thing that we'll do is go inside settings, then tap on general, then tap on iPhone storage and enable for offload unused apps. Now what it will do is it will automatically offload any applications that you haven't been using lately. All of the data and backup of the application will still be present on your device and you can continue using your application just like normal after you download it. And if you want to take manual control of it, you can also do that. Like for example, if I want to offload YouTube, I can just tap on it and I can then tap on offload app. And that's it. Now whenever I try to open YouTube, you can see it's giving me option to download it first. Even if I'll open the app library, it still shows me option to download the app first. And if I want, I can just tap on download. And after the download has finished, I can continue using it normally. But like I just told you, it'll still leave icons on your home screen and that can still give you a very messy look on your device. Now, the first thing that I'll do is just collect all of these apps and I'll just put them on a different page altogether. And I'll just leave them on this page. Now, I'll just tap on these dots, uncheck it, and just remove the whole page. Voila, it's done. And this still hasn't finished. The cherry on top is still left. I'll just go inside settings, tap on home screen, and then select app library only. Now what this will do is any new application that I'll install on my device from this point now on, it won't show its icon on home screen and will directly place it inside the app library. Thus giving you a less cluttered look. Next up is a setting that will help you to protect your data on your iPhone even if it gets stolen. So we'll just launch the settings app, scroll a little and tap on face ID and passcode, enter the passcode when prompted and now scroll down a little. And now I can toggle off all of these buttons in order to restrict anybody's access if my device is locked. As you can see, I've turned off the toggle for all of these icons and now there isn't any option for anybody to access my device even if it gets into wrong hands. Now next up, you might have noticed that Apple has been pushing a lot of features into iOS that promotes work-life balance and live your life kind of things. For example, you have a dedicated toggle for notifications wherein you can just turn off notification for any application that you think might take up a lot of time that you think is productive. But a very underrated feature in iOS that literally nobody is talking about is notification summary. So what this feature will do is instead of letting notifications pile up on your notification tray, this feature can schedule an alert for all the alerts that you think are a little unnecessary. Like for example, Instagram's notification can be time sensitive for some people, but I'm sure Flipkart's promotional stories are not time sensitive to anybody and can be viewed later on. So let's have a look at how you can set up notification summary on your iPhone. So first we'll go inside settings, then tap on notifications, then tap on schedule summary and toggle it on. Now I'll just select the application which shows me notifications which are not time sensitive. Like for example, I don't use Instagram way too much and yeah, its notifications are not time sensitive to me. So I'll just tap on Instagram tips application and I can just tap on show more in order to see more applications, YouTube. Then I'll tap on add three apps 
And now I can select the time at which I want my summary to arrive. By default, it's 8 a.m. but I want it to be 10 a.m. Let's suppose. And second summary, I want to show up at 8 p.m. And then if I want, I can also add another summary, but that's not required in my case. So I'll just tap on turn on notification summary. And as you can see, all the cluttered notifications have been piled up and will be shown only twice a day. Okay, now let's talk about the next trick. But before that, be prepared to get a little shocked. You see, the back of your iPhone has a secret button that you can just tap on in order to trigger any action that you want. Let me show you how you can set it up. So I'll just go inside settings application, after which I'll tap on accessibility, tap on touch, and then scroll down to the bottom and tap on back tap. As you can see, I get two options, double tap and triple tap. I can tap on any one of them in order to map an action to them. So let's just say I want the double tap to open the control center on my device. So I'll just select this and Whenever I'll double tap on the back of my device, it'll open the notification tray. If I want the triple tap to take a screenshot, for example, so I can just triple tap on it and my iPhone will take a screenshot. Now let's move ahead and talk about 5G. If you're watching this video after mid-December, chances are you have already unlocked the 5G capabilities of your iPhone if it supports it. But what if you don't want to use 5G on your iPhone? Well, actually there's a method for that. You see, you can go inside settings open mobile data, tap on mobile data options, tap on voice and data, and now you can select 4G out of these options. And you'll be good to go. If you have noticed, Safari has been getting a lot of revamps over the time. And to me, the best change was migration of the address bar from top to bottom. But if for some reason you don't want address bar to be on the bottom instead of top, you can just bring it to the top. <laughs> Let's see how you can do that. Just go inside settings, scroll down a little, and tap on Safari. Oops, yeah, here Safari is. And now tap on single tab instead of tab bar. Now, whenever you will go back to Safari, it will be back to the iOS 14 style. You will still get buttons at the bottom and the address bar on top. Now that we have talked about Safari, let's talk about browsers for a minute. So if you're still using iPhone's default mails app and Safari as your default email client and your web browser, chances are you haven't been following iGeeksBlog properly, so which is why I would recommend you to subscribe to us and make sure you press the bell icon so that whenever we upload a new video, you get updated about it. Now, coming back to the topic, this is how you can change your default email clients app and default web browser on your iPhone. Firstly, install any third-party browser or email client on your device. After that, go to settings and open that particular application that you installed. Now, as you can see, I get a new option for default browser app. I can just tap on it and now I can select whichever browser app I want to be default. In this case, I'll just select Chrome and done. You can follow same procedure in order to change default emails client app. Now, last setting that I would definitely recommend all iPhone users to turn on because you have unnecessarily been sending information to Apple and some of that information might be, you know, a little too personal. But hey, do you want to be the one who wants the device to be tracked or monitored or even analyzed in any way by Apple? I'm sure not. So do follow these steps. <laughs> Just go inside settings, scroll down a little, tap on privacy and security. Now scroll down to the bottom, now tap on analytics and improvements and as you can see there are a lot of toggles that were on by default. Just toggle them off and you'll be good to go. Now go back and tap on Apple advertising and toggle off for personalized ads. Just, just trust me on this. So that's it for this one. If you're watching this video till this point, I know you've liked it. So make sure you express it by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to stay updated with everything Apple, then make sure to download the iGeeks blog app from the App Store. And this is me here signing off and in the next video.